Alright, this is uh, Eternal Security. Once saved, always saved. Eternal Security. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we open up with uh, with prayer and with a few verses. Alright, dear God, I thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon. I just pray that you'll allow this to be uh, biblical and um, logical and um, music, music to our ears. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now, let's turn to Psalm 121. <clears throat> Psalm 121, um, it talks about that God is our, you know, God is our keeper. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made, you know, heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall, shall neither slumber nor, nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon, upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Okay, the simple fact that the Bible says that the, that the Lord will preserve us is proof that we are secure in Christ the moment we believe on Christ for eternal life. Okay, we are secure. Now, um, let me let's let me show you a few verses that back this up. Okay, if you turn to um. Turn to Titus chapter. Uh, well, there's only one. There's only one uh, chap. Well, no, there's actually three chapters in Titus. But we're gonna look at chapter one. I'm thinking of uh, Jude here, which Jude actually is a good, uh, good book in the Bible for eternal security because it, it, he opens up his letter with eternal security and then he ends it with eternal security. We'll look at some of those verses as well. But Titus chapter one says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and according to knowledge of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Now, if a person comes to Christ and believes in him for eternal life and doesn't have eternal life, then God is a liar. And we know right there that God is not a liar. Now, turn to the book of Jude. Okay? The book of Jude, it, it starts off with eternal security. Let me let's go ahead and read it. Okay? Okay, we're looking at the word preserved here a lot in this sermon, okay? Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and, the, and, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Okay, they're preserved. Now, if you turn to the end of Jude, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of, the glor of, of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and, and ever. Amen. The Bible says we, we once we believe, we have a, you know, we are t eternally secure. Now, if you turn to Second Timothy, this this point is reiterated here. If you turn to Second Timothy chapter uh, four, verse eighteen, it reads, "And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work." This is not talking about being delivered from sin. It's talking about Paul being delivered from uh, execution. You know, once he, you know, my point is he's going to be preserved and will preserve me un unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Once you're saved, you're preserved. You you couldn't lose your salvation if you wanted to. Now turn to First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter one. Let's start with verse five. That in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You, now, what if, what, now, people are wondering, what if, you, what if we lose our faith? What if we stop believing? What if we sin? What if we backslide? Well, it says right here, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We have to remember that it's God that saves us. Turn to John chapter 6. God does all the work. John chapter 6. Now, if you take, now look at this. It's the Holy Spirit that, that, that's going to give you eternal that gives you eternal life. Now, chapter 6, verse um, 62 and 63, it says right here, What and what and if okay, what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up, you know, where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. Okay, quick to give life. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that's the words that's, that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay. Now, if you back it up in chapter six to to verse um, thirty-seven, it says, "All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out." Okay. If you come to Christ by believing, you know. If you back up to verse thirty-five, it actually talks about believing. If 
words. And those who believe and believeth on me shall never thirst. Okay, you come to Christ and he cast you out. The Bible's a liar, but you, you know, God cannot cast you out. It says if you keep reading, it says he will raise you up again at the last day. At the, at the last day. Now turn to Hebrews. Now I know there are people out there that say, well, you can give your salvation back. Well, the Bible does not teach that anywhere. Turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Take a look at verse 5. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Now, you may forsake God, but God will never forsake you. Now, to those who say, well, you can give your salvation back, I'm going to disprove that right now with one verse. Turn to Romans chapter 11. Look at verse 29. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God would have to repent in order to take your salvation back, but he can't do that. You know, once he gives you the gift of eternal life, it's eternal life. He can't take he cannot take it back. You cannot lose it no matter what you do. Now, um you say, well, what about those who sin? If you keep on sinning, well everyone keeps on sinning. That's what the Bible says, uh, turn 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 to first John. Now, if you turn to First John chapter two, read the look at the things right I unto you that ye sin not, okay? And if any man sin, and, and you're going to, by the way, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. It says if you sin, you, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So everyone, everyone sins, okay? Now, um, now turn to Romans. Romans chapter eight. Now look at this verse. It, Romans chapter eight, verse one says, "There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are that are in Christ, which are in Christ Jesus." Okay, if you're in Christ Jesus, if you believe on Christ for eternal life, there's no condemnation. It doesn't matter what you do. There's no condemnation. Now, we're, since we're in Romans chapter eight, let's jump up a few verses here. It says right here, um, "Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth." Okay, there's no way you can go to hell once you're saved because you know you're justified by faith alone. Now, how can I can I prove that? I can prove that. And if you back up to verse to chapter three, it says justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Okay, you're not justified by the law, seeing it is one God which shall justify the the, the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. If you simply have just faith in Christ that he's he's the you know the ob he's the object of your faith. If you believe that he that he's enough for salvation for eternal life that he died for your sins, you're saved and you're eternally secure. And that can also be reiterated in Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, okay? That means no sin can separate you from God either. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No, no matter what you do, you're eternally secure. Because it's not, it's not about how we live. It's not about works. It's not about um, persevering to the end. All that stuff is nonsense. And um, I'll prove that. When I, when I preach on eternal security, I'm not, preaching etern I'm not preaching the Calvinistic perseverance of the saints garbage. I'm preaching... The, the biblical doctrine of eternal security, and I'll prove that perseverance of the saints is not true. If you turn to First uh, Timothy chapter four, verse one says, "Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils." It says they departed from the faith. Now they still had faith; they're, they're secure. Now I'm going to close with one last verse here, and this is a verse that proves eternal security in in three way in three places in one verse. Now it says right here, turn to John chapter five, verse twenty four. It reads. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Okay, it says you have everlasting life. You have it now. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That means if you've heard the word of God, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you've heard the word of God, and everyone has, it, it, to some degree, that now you can shun the light. You can shun the revelation that God's given you. My point is, if you heard the word of God, and you believed on him that sent me, that's Jesus Christ, life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's eternal security. That's once saved, always saved. Always saved. One last verse. I said that was going to be the last one. I'm going to go ahead and give you one more. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Because i got to make this, like, a, like I said, a 10-minute sermon. I can go over a few minutes, I guess. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse, verse 30 reads, now look at this, if you're a believer in Christ, now listen, if you, if you believe right now in Christ, it means you, you had to have at one point, you know, believed, you know, but wait, you know, at one point in time, no, nobody, nobody's born a believer, 
You know, the Bible says that you know we're born in enmity against God. The fact that you believe is proof that you you the belief started sometime. I heard somebody say, "I don't know when I believed. I don't know what the, I don't know when it was I first believed." It doesn't matter as long as you believe right now. Now the thing about that is, if let's just say you're doubting your salvation right now, then then it, all all that matters is that you believed at one point in time. See how see how that works? Okay, if, you know. Now Ephesians chapter four verse thirty reads. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, that seal is permanent. That seal is secure. If you believe on Christ for eternal life, you're not trusting in your works. You're not trusting in, you know, baptism, sacraments, persevering to the end, repenting of your sins, and all that stuff. If you're not trusting in all that stuff, if you believe on Christ and Christ alone for salvation, you are saved and eternally secure. That's all I have when we close in prayer. Dear God, I thank you for allowing me to ha have this truth and to know this truth and to reveal this truth. To the world, I just pray that you'll allow us to embrace it and to grow in this in, in your grace. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.